iPhone 5 pre-orders have begun, LG schedules an event with Qualcomm, and Verizon and Sprint won't get the iPhone 5 you're expecting. I'm Jaime Rivera, hating midnight Pacific time, and this is Pocket Now Daily. Apple's iPhone 5, new iPod Nano, and new generation iPod Touch started pre-orders as of midnight Pacific time and the expected happened. The iPhone 5's pre-orders pushed availability from September 21st to shipping in two weeks, just two hours after launch. So do any of you have any bets as to when the iPhone 5 will pretty much sell out? My bets are set at 4 p.m. Now LG has just sent out invites for an event along with Qualcomm on September 19th and the only thing we can think of is that the Optimus G is making it to the United States before we thought. And the reason why is because the Optimus G is LG's first smartphone, or pretty much the world's first smartphone, to run on Qualcomm's new quad-core processor on a system on a chip. So the only problem we have with this is why, oh why, do OEMs all match on their event dates because HTC has another event on the same September 19th. Now, Google's recent move to make Google Wallet open to almost every credit card has literally begun to pay off. The reason why is because apparently they've doubled in usage in just one month, according to Google. Now, whether that's going to make Google Wallet the mainstream service for payments is yet to be seen, but so far it does seem to be working. Microsoft has recently backtracked on asking current Windows Phone customers what they want from Windows Phone 7.8. The reason why is because apparently after the forum post went live, the feedback was so intense that Microsoft ended up sending an apology and stating that no, they didn't want to know what we wanted from Windows Phone 7.8. All they wanted to know is what we wanted from future versions, which seems kind of awkward. But still, it does seem that Microsoft ended up just pushing back because, well, the feedback was too negative to bear. And finally, with the iPhone 5's launch, a couple of things were discovered. First of all is that the carrier unlock variants are going to have to wait, sadly. Second of all is that Apple's actually working on three iPhones. The first one to work on AT&T and Canada's LTE, the second one on Verizon and Sprint's LTE, and the third one to work on Europe and Australia's LTE. So call this the next nightmare. Now the biggest problem with this Verizon and Sprint variant is that it won't be able to do 3G calls and 4G LTE simultaneously for data. Which makes you wonder if Apple really understands the whole reason why 4G LTE came to be. So this leads me to the question of the day. Do you use data and call simultaneously? Because I do a lot. Uh, leave us a comment down below. Now, if you want an earlier scoop of everything that's happening in the smartphone and tablet world, make sure you follow us on Pocketnow.com. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks for watching.